Hi guys, welcome back to Students of Chemistry. If you haven't watched my previous videos yet, then I kindly appreciate everyone to watch all of my previous seven videos regarding physical NMR, which is very important for this particular topic. From our previous classes, we have understood that if we apply the resonance phenomena, that is, if we pass a radio frequency wave in a frequency equal to the Lormar frequency, then the nucleus pins can be excited from the lower energy state to the higher energy state. After that, a saturation point will be reached from which if we evolve the absorbed energy, it comes back to the thermal equilibrium. The energy can be evolved by relaxation processes and the evolved energy can be analyzed to give a nuclear induction spectrum. As the saturation point ceases to thermal equilibrium, the energy evolved will also decrease gradually and hence our signal will also de decay gradually. This signal which decays gradually, we call it as free induction decay. That is the decaying signal which is induced by the relaxation process. The mathematical technique with which we convert this time domain signal to frequency domain spectrum that is from a signal which varies with time to a spectrum which varies with frequency is called as Fourier transformation technique. This is our FID which is known as free induction decay. It decays with time. If we apply Fourier transformation to this FID then we would get a spectrum with frequency domain. Let us see how this happens in this video. I am SSN. You are watching Students of Chemistry. Let us get into the topic. At first, let us see how we get a signal from the relaxation process. Here, I'm going to explain this with the help of transverse relaxation. In transverse relaxation, our magnetization would uh, revolve around the XY axis. When the magnetization is present only in the X axis, there will be no signal from the Y axis. If the magnetization is present in this position, both X and Y axis will exhibit a signal. If the magnetization is present only in the Y axis, then there will be no signal from X axis, whereas Y axis will show a peak. Repeated such types will give a, repeated such steps will give us signals like this. From this, we conclude that magnetization is directly proportional to the signals. Remember this calculation from our previous classes? If not, kindly go and watch the video which is popping out from here. The only difference which I did is change the small omega with the capital omega, the offset. Since magnetization is directly proportional to the signal, we can write both these equations in terms of signal. As a consequence of the way in which Fourier transformation works, we should regard Sx which varies with time and Sy which varies with time as the real and imaginary parts are shown here of a complex signal to complex total signal S of t, which is equal to S of t is equal to Sx of t plus I Sy of t. As, a, as it is a complex signal. We know the values of Sx and Sy from our previous slides and hence the equation becomes like this. But by Euler's formula, exponential of I theta is equal to cos theta plus I sin theta. Hence, by taking S naught out as common, cos omega t plus I sin omega t, cos omega t plus I sin omega t will become as S naught into exponential of I omega t. Since we arrived this equation with the help of decaying transverse magnetization, we have to account for the T2 contributions too. Hence the term exponential of minus T by T2. If you observe very carefully, the rate at which T2 decays varies with time. 
it decays very large when time is zero and then decays very small as time proceeds hence rate r2 is inversely proportional to the time t2 if we want to depict this signal as a spectrum then the signal which starts with an initial value will show an absorption spectrum and the signal which starts with zero would show an dispersion spectrum the shape of this peaks is known as laurentian peak and hence we call the spectrum as absorption laurentian and uh, dispersion laurentian in nmr we use only absorption laurentian if we increase the value of s not the height of absorption laurentian also increases with this way we can actually find out uh, the number of equivalent protons present in our molecule more the equivalent protons more will be the height of the absorption laurentian less the equivalent protons less will be the height of the absorption laurentian as i said earlier in nmr we use only absorption laurentian then how to eliminate the dispersion laurentian that occurs in the conversion of signal to spectrum take a look at this the magnetization is present only in the x axis signal s starts with some initial value and signal y uh, starts with zero and hence signal s has an absorption laurentian and signal y has an dispersion laurentian likewise uh, when magnetization uh, revolves around we get different laurentians we expect an absorption laurentian in our real part because only the absorption laurentian gives maximum intensity the deviating dispersion laurentian goes from positive to negative and of no use in nmr the dispersion laurentian is helpful only in the case of esr and epr to find the electron density around an atom here we get an absorption laurentian in our real part when our magnetization is present only in the x axis unfortunately this won't be our only case when we record our spectrum the magnetization can be present anywhere as it is revolving we describe it as the signal is phase shifted or simply phase error the solution to this is very interesting we can see the effect of phase shift by an angle phi in each and every other images adding this phase shift contribution with positive exponential our signal will be like this if we remove this phase shift contribution by introducing a phase correction then we can obtain only absorption laurentian in our real part of the spectrum we know that exponential of a multiplied by exponential of b gives us exponential of a plus b hence exponential of i phi correction and exponential of i phi will give exponential of i into phi correction plus phi as we have introduced phase correction to remove the phase error we have to change our phase correction by trial and error method until we could see only the absorption laurentian or until we could see only minus phi hence exponential of i phi correction plus phi would become exponential of 0 and exponential of 0 is nothing but 1 hence we get our final equation which is very same to our previously derived equation such phase correction can also be done to the frequency domain and this phase correction we call it as frequency independent phase correction or zero order phase correction this is what conversion of signals from time domain to frequency domain looks like the major problem in ftnma is when we record an fid when we record an fid inevitably we also record noise that is produced by the nmr coil at the same time the fid decays over time but in contrast the noise just goes on and on therefore if we carry on recording data for long after the fid has decayed we will just measure noise and no signal in other words the signal to noise ratio will be poor the solution to this is just shortening the time spent recording the spectrum this is called the acquisition time 
this improves our signal to noise ratio since more or less all the signal is contained in the early part of the fid with this i like to conclude this uh, short video if you like this video please like share comment and subscribe to the, our channel hit the bell icon i will see you guys in the next one thank you